first up is Miyabi. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Lily, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Voltage Otome game Enchanted in the Moonlight. Now before I start, note that although I would not consider any of why I include this video as spoilers, I'm aware that what you consider spoilers and what I consider spoilers may not quite align, so if you're even a little bit sensitive and you don't even want to know what's on the web, Side, then I would swiftly move on. Also, if you like Otome games, if you like visual novels, and if you like fangirling over 2D guys, then you've come to the right place because I upload videos once or twice a week and sometimes, you know, stream Otome content as well. But anyway, let me start. So first up is the synopsis. Now this game is about Ayakashi, it's about this girl who has this power inside her and one day it awakens and then all these annoying little Ayakashi and demons start attacking her. However, one day six Ayakashi appear in front of her and kind of rescue her from these beasties. Uh, now however, since they're Ayakashi as well, five of these are after her power as well and the way to take this power is by you know, doing the deed, if you know what I mean. So you can already tell that this game is kind of smutty and steamy, and I'm not saying this in a good way. <laughs> now moving on to the system. So this game is actually originally a phone game, and then it got ported onto Switch, and I played the Switch version. I have played the main game. Now, there are all the other bits and pieces, like point of view uh, stories, bonus stories, season two, I think. Um, but I have played the main game. Um, it's split into two, and one has uh, Miyabi, Kyoga, and Samong. And the other has Chikage, Yukinojo, and Kiryu. So I guess you can pick one or the other depending on what characters you like. Now this game is vaulted, so it doesn't really have like the main character doesn't have a face. You don't really get love catch. You have two endings. One's the happy ending and then the other's a good ending. I believe the happy one is supposed to be like the best ending and then the good one's like the medium ending. But it's kind of nice to know that there are no real bad endings, if you know what I mean. Um, so it does have skip function. It doesn't have the skip to next uh, option function, but it does have the skipping through everything function, which is great. Um, one thing that's quite handy is that it has a setting where you can change it from English to Japanese. So if you're studying Japanese and you'd like to, you know, see how it's being translated, it might be quite handy to, you know, be able to switch between those settings. Note that there is no voice acting, unfortunately. So yeah, that's, that's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. And I believe each main route took about maybe five hours to complete maybe four it's 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 short yeah i think four is probably more accurate maybe three <laughs> it really is short like compared to automate games and um the prologue probably took me about 20 30 minutes to complete but anyway moving on to the character descriptions first up is miyabi <laughs> Pervy fox. Um, he's not. The thing is, right? Like, he's after the main character. Like, right from the bat, he's like flirting. He's attempting to do things to her. He is horny and pervy as hell. Like, he, he just, yeah, he's a nightmare. He's an Odesama character. He thinks he's really good and attractive, and all of this is really like, what is wrong with you? But if you like kitsune characters, it's great because he is like the, you know, kitsune ayakashi. And um, it was interesting finally seeing him open up to the main character rather than having this tough, like, confident exterior, you know. So it, there were moments where it was interesting, but he was so pervy. And, and I will talk about that in a moment. <laughs> Next up is Kyoga. Now Kyoga is a werewolf. Um, he wasn't as like annoying as Miyabi. Um, he's quite a mature guy. I 
genuinely got like a warmer kind of vibe from him compared to the other characters. He was also more of an adult compared to the other characters as well. Like he's just mature. He was kind. I think he does kind of make a move on the main character at the start. But like, I don't know. I didn't get any malicious vibes or evil vibes from him. I think he just, he was nice. But he is a werewolf, so beware of him on a full moon. And uh, if you go ahead and play this, you'll know what I mean. That was an interesting steamy scene. But anyway, <laughs> moving on to Samon. Now, Samon was actually like the only super, super sweet, you know, character. He's a Zashiki Warashi. He's not actually after her powers. So it's kind of nice seeing that. It's a bit refreshing. Uh, like he's not like trying to make moves on her constantly. He just leaves her alone. He actually has been, you know, doing house cleaning and like the housework. And he's kind of always like a housekeeper for the main characters. Um, big house uh, right from the beginning it's just that when all this power stuff happens she finally finds out that he was ayakashi all along and he's zashiki warashi which is an ayakashi that brings good fortune to homes and yeah he was just nice i think it's very obvious that he likes her it was one of those routes where he likes her the main character doesn't really realize and it's kind of bittersweet because you're like oh i'm rooting for you someone and um i think even in the other routes you do kind of think like especially after playing his route you're like you feel a bit guilty that she's going with the other guys because someone i think has always been there and wants the best for her as i said it's the only route that i felt genuine warmth from now the second game so first up is Chikage. Chikage is a Kudera character. Um, I think he's, yeah, he's a Tengu. And uh, I think he kind of feels very cool and cold at the beginning. Like he's very efficient in that he just wants a power and then wants to move on, if you know what I mean. Like he doesn't really care about emotions or romance or anything like that. He just wants the power. And that's kind of something you see amongst a lot of the characters as well. And uh, yeah, but he's a cool little character and he doesn't show his emotions much. Like he's not, you know, he's the one that calms everyone down when everyone's going a bit crazy. Which, by the way, it's kind of nice to see like this element of family-ness amongst them because all these Ayakashi end up staying at her big house because like to protect her from all the other demons and um but he's always the one that calms people down like hey you're making a lot of noise that sort of thing so he does come across as mature you also see elements of jealousy I think like a little bit of possessiveness in his route which was nice and um it was nice when he opened up to her, like when you finally got to see the Dere side, it was it was like, oh, finally I get to see who you are. <laughs> so he was fun and um, yeah, I, I didn't mind him. Second up is Yuki no Jo. Oh my God, I did not like him at all. Like, ugh. I'm really sorry if you, there are any fans out there, but I just, I really struggled with him because he seems nice, but he was, and you can tell right from the start, to be honest, he's one of those characters that seems really nice, but turns out to be a massive a-hole. Like, out of all of them, I think he was the most cold, which is kind of funny because he's a Yuki on that, which is like a snow person. And um, so he's... He's really cold right from the beginning and it takes forever for him to thaw. Not to mention he is of a trope that I absolutely despise. Um, do ask me, whether it be on Discord, on the comments or like in a stream, whatever. Do ask me if you want to know what it is. Obviously, I'm not going to say it in this video because it's a spoiler. Um, but do, do ask me if you want to know what this trope is and I will tell you. And in a way, it might be better to know before you play because honestly, it just it wasn't it wasn't a fun trope to play. And it really put me off of the route. And um, I mean, it was okay. Just I'm, I kind of wanted to get it over and done with. So he was actually the first route I played in that game. Now, third up is Kiryu. I'm not gonna lie. I was really surprised like why Kiryu was the one that made it into this game. Because there's actually an Oni character who I believe was the first six characters to play anyway. So I don't know why he wasn't in the Switch port, but... Anyway, Kiryu was a very random one. He is of the Dragon Clan, the Liu Clan, and um, he's naturally kind of cold, um, as is 
most of the characters in this game, by the way. Now, he doesn't want her power due to the actual power. He wants it for other reasons. But it's he's really random in that when you when it, you go through the prologue it's like oh choose someone to protect you or whatever because you go to the character selection scene and um instead of like you know picking someone that's there you pick kiryu and then he appears out of nowhere it's like no you're going to be mine and then like grabs her and puts the the like little bite mark like love by whatever it's called on her neck because that's their way of like scenting her almost because what they do is they like put a love bite here and um that's what kind of makes other ayakashi impossible to get to her because they need to be more powerful than the person who put on the mark and um but yeah he just appears out of nowhere and then grabs her and gives her a love bite and it's just it's just so random and weird like it's out of nowhere and um it does make me laugh though because the other characters are like where the hell did you come from and then they can't do anything about it because he's from the powerful dragon clan and i mean don't get me wrong i did enjoy his route because one he's good looking and two he was cold but i still didn't feel like it was unfairly cold he was he still was kind of like human like it's just he was still cold if you know what i mean he wasn't kyoga or someone kind of like cuteness um but his it was okay i didn't mind him if i were to rank the characters i'd probably put someone at the top because he was like the super cute one and then i'd probably put chikage second because i don't know i, I like the like the occasional possessiveness he showed and then i'd probably put put miyabi and chikage i mean uh miyabi and kiryu maybe and kyoga see from this point onwards i don't really like i stopped caring <laughs> like i i didn't really have much of a preference uh, but right i knew right at the bottom was yuki no jo because of the trope and um but yeah it, it yeah i i don't know i think the characters are somewhat distinct it's just that roots were relatively uh repetitive now moving on to who i would and would not recommend this game to i would recommend this game to those who are quite busy they just want something quick to play you know because you can get it on the phone as well and even the switch edition you can literally like get through it really quickly i personally find these games a good break from long automate titles because automate titles typically take like 50 hours whereas these games each route's so short and sweet and it's like yeah it's like a fast food uh, automate game and that's exactly what i need sometimes um so it's good for those who want something short it's good for someone who doesn't care about story and just wants like smutty action because some of the scenes were like super smutty and steamy and i don't even know what was going on most of the time i was like oh okay action's happening um romance progression isn't great like you don't see it develop how you would like it to but that's probably because it's such a short game uh but if you don't care about that then great if you don't really care that much about you know the fact that the main character doesn't have a face and you're not too put off by you know cgs that aren't detailed like don't get me wrong they're drawn like you know they're, they're anatomically fine it's just you know there isn't a lot of detail or anything like that so it's all relatively simple same goes for music so you know if you're looking for something that's simple and you just want to play a quick game then this is great um oh also one more thing to note there is a lot of like attempted non-consensual activity in this game um so if that's something that bothers you then i would probably not recommend this game so if, i'd recommend it to those who aren't really like phased by that note that you don't really need to worry and that they're never really truly successful in the non-con stuff like i don't personally get affected by non-con or dub con as long as they don't manage to do the whole act and the main character isn't screaming and like you know as long as i don't see any of that it doesn't bother me and this game also didn't bother me because although the attempt was there nothing really happens it's quite mild in that sense but talking about that moving on to those who i would not recommend this game to i would not recommend this game to those who absolutely despise non-consensual uh, stuff whether it be you know just like even trying to kiss the girl or anything even dubcom if, if you're not fond of that and that's a trigger for you avoid this game like the play because honestly the guys are constantly trying to get with the girl like i don't know how she dealt with that in her own home like 
I would be going crazy. I'd probably want to stay over at my best friend's house or something. Because honestly, it was just like, what is this? <laughs> there was no safe location. It was just ridiculous. Um, so if that's a trigger for you, avoid like the plague um also if you're looking for something that's more in depth and has a good story and like a, a good character development with a good romance progression then i would avoid this game because you know it it it, it yeah it's it's a voltage phone game put it that way so it's supposed to be short and sweet and quick to play it's not supposed to be this elaborate masterpiece or whatever um so you know if you're looking for something with volume and something long and something that you can really get into then I would probably avoid this game but anyway moving on to what I rate this game as so the thing is right and it's not that I hated it I didn't really mind it but I also wasn't like that hyped and excited about it either so I'd probably give it about a 1.5 or 2 out of Five. don't get me wrong I understand that it's a voltage game so you know voltage phone games so you know they're not gonna have voice acting and it's not gonna be that detailed I understood that but also even if I were to rate it as like okay let's say this is a voltage rating whatever and you know I'm changing my parameters based on voltage games alone even then I would probably put this game towards the lower side of the scale purely because each route was so unbelievably repetitive and you know it, it just almost felt like fan service like they just wanted to make a steamy game for some reason to keep people who want steamy games happy and like didn't really put that much effort into the story itself and um so that's why I'm giving it, you know, 1.5 to 2. Uh, don't, like, the thing is, it's not that I didn't like it. It's okay. It's just, you know, if you're going to buy it, if you're curious, you want a bite-sized, you know, snacky, fast food game, then I would probably get it on sale. Maybe just buy one on sale and then see if you enjoy it. And if you did, then get the other one on sale as well. I, I decided to get both because I wanted to make a review on it. But, um, yeah. As I said, it's not that I hate it. I don't really care that much. It's just, if you're, you know, new to Otome games and you want to experience what Otome games are like, then I would probably not recommend this because it's not a good place to start. Because if you play this as your first Otome game, you'll be like, oh my God, all Otome games are like this? Okay, I'll avoid this genre, if you know what I mean. But anyway, that concludes this uh, review video. Um, do, do comment below if you feel differently. If you really enjoyed this game, then I'd be curious to know why. Just purely because, you know, if people come here to watch this video for review, then it's always nice to see, like, what people who enjoyed the game felt about it as well. Just as much as someone who is, you know, giving it a 1.5 out of 5. Um, so I think if you could leave what your thoughts were, or, you know, tell me somehow, then I'd be interested and I think other people would be interested to know as well. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos or streams. Bye!